Hello everybody, in this video we will highlight various ways of importing files into Netfab. When we go to Netfab Help, Online Help, we can see the File Formats Reference document. This document shows us the different CAD files, mesh files, and slice files we can open in Netfab. Today we will focus on the CAD and the mesh file formats. Let's take a closer look. One way to find out the same information is by going into the Add Parts dialog. In this dialog, we can see the full list of different CAD files as well as MeSH files you can open. And for certain CAD programs, you can even see the versions. 3MF files that are created with NetFab automatically get a little preview. In order to see the preview of additional MeSH files, Instead of using the Add Parts dialog, you can go to the File Preview Browser and choose the file that you wish to import, and it will show you what they look like before even opening them. Another pro tip that I recommend is to use the 3D Viewer option within Windows. If you have the Preview pane activated within the View tab, by simply clicking on a 3MF file or an STL file, you get a little animation directly in your Windows browser. You can even pause that animation, zoom in and out, and rotate the geometry to get a better view of the file that you are going to interact with. After opening the file, you will see if the STL is good or if it has problems. In this case, we're dealing with a problematic STL. I will go ahead and turn off the platform visibility and turn on the mesh using Control P for the platform and Control G for the mesh. I can visibly see an issue as there are certain triangles missing. Whenever we import a problematic mesh file, we can simply repair it using one of the repair scripts. Here I'm going to run a simple repair, execute, and we will have a repaired STL file. STL files are represented in the browser with a circle. CAD files are represented in the browser with a cylinder. Let's go ahead and demonstrate. By simply drag and drop operations, we can import files into NetFab. Whenever we import a CAD object, the first question that comes up is about the tessellation. We need to tell the software which tessellation level to use to convert a CAD surface into a tessellated shape. I prefer to use a low accuracy, which gives me a low triangle count. And using a low triangle count model, I can do secondary operations such as orientation, support creation, and packing much more efficiently. But when it comes time to printing, I do a final tessellation using a high or extreme accuracy to get the most out of my printer. Let's go ahead and hit OK to the low accuracy and choose not to show this dialog at every import so we don't get stopped in our workflow going forward. When the CAD object is imported, we see the cylinder icon and the file name. Like I mentioned before, since this object is a CAD-based object, I can retessellate it after doing all the secondary operations by going into Prepare, Retessellate Model using a high accuracy right before printing. And this will give me a much better curvature on cylinders like this area right here. If I use a low tessellation, such as the low accuracy, I will end up with a print where the tessellation is clearly visible, like you see in this picture. So far, we used the parts platform to import our geometry. Whenever we're dealing with a machine workspace, we get slightly different options. So for the next part of the demo, I'm going to open a HP Jet Fusion printer, and I'll use the same add parts dialog. This time, when I'm opening an STL file, the engine automatically recognizes that the part has issues and allows me to do an automatic repair directly within the open experience. When I say automatic repair, 
I will now have a re repaired version of that motor mount, which allows me to proceed with packing and uh, printing with a repaired object. Let's start a new project and talk about some of the more advanced import options. So far, we added objects using add part, as well as file preview browser, and a simple drag and drop from a menu. When we go to settings, we have a couple of other options we can benefit from, one of which is the advanced file import dialog. If I enable the advanced file import dialog and hit save as a setting, when I'm bringing one or multiple parts, let's go ahead and bring in just a single STL, I get this new dialog that I didn't get before. This dialog allows me to type in a quantity. By double clicking, I can change the number to say 10, hit OK. It gives me information about the file with its name, its size, how many triangles it's made out of, and if the, if the size is inappropriate, I can quickly scale it to change units from, uh, for example, millimeters to centimeters or inches to millimeters, for example. And if the quality is bad, I can automatically repair it using a simple repair or an extended repair functionality. This dialog also allows me to automatically arrange those 10 parts so that they do not show up on top of each other. Let's just go with the default automatic uh, arrangement and add the 10 parts. And as you can see, I have those 10 parts in their orientation repaired within the platform, not on top of each other. Another option we have for opening files in NetFab is to transfer them directly from the CAD application. Here, we have a model created in Fusion. And if you go to the Tools tab and click the NetFab for Fusion icon, within the Make panel, I can transfer any geometry directly to NetFab or NetFab Local Simulation. When I click OK, a new instance of NetFab will launch, and I will be able to add the part directly into NetFab. Let's start a new project and demonstrate the final import method of the day, which is using scripts. NetFab Ultimate allows you to run certain scripts that are shipped with the software or ones that you create yourself. Here, I've selected one of the demo scripts included with the software. When executed, it allows you to choose one of multiple workflows. I'm going to highlight the load directory option, which is relevant to our importing demonstration. When I choose load directory and navigate to the folder that I want to open, I can select this entire folder and open all the parts associated with it. After which, I can hit close and take a closer look at my parts. Let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of the platform and the, turn off the mesh edges. Here we can see the parts have been automatically added and their colors are transferred into NetFab as well. In this video, we covered multiple ways of importing files into NetFab in order to prepare them for printing. If you have any questions about any of these workflows, please feel free to contact your technical specialists. Thank you.